What's up? How y'all doing? It's Jared. What's up, Benchmade 781 Anthem? One of my favorite things about this knife is the fact that it changes color. Look at the side. Look at this kind of bronze, bronze ass gold anodizing on this integral titanium handle here. It's Benchmade's first integral. Came out in 2017. As opposed to this side, which is gray. Right? I just wiped it down and I noticed just the drastic change in color. You can see up there under the pocket clip where the oils from my hand actually haven't you know, gotten into that titanium yet. And I washed this thing earlier with uh, soap and water. I disassembled it and washed it out. And just from me playing with it from like, you know, for the last like three hours, it's turned gray. It's got that gray ass color to it. You can see, you know, where I did actually clean right there under the pocket clip post to this side. It's just really cool. I like the fact that it changes color. It kind of changes in personality a little bit. This knife is interesting. It's an interesting knife. If you're familiar with the, you know, the three different types of knife that I came up with a little while ago, the, you know, type, first types I'll type handle a, uh, a knife that I'll hand to anybody. Second type of knife, something you're going to show somebody how to use. And the third type of knife is just it's too dangerous unless somebody properly knows how to use it. This actually falls kind of into that second category. Most manual action folders are just going to, I'm just going to be able to hand it to somebody. I mean, you can hand somebody this Chris Reese Benza right here and they're probably going to be able to figure it out. There isn't as much of a risk of somebody hurting themselves with a knife like this. But this knife doesn't fall into that. This is actually a little bit dangerous because the moment you unleash this lock, on you know, undo the, that axis lock right there, this thing's running on ball bearings. And so it's very free floating. It moves around like just nothing's even there, right? And I've got a couple other knives actually. They're almost just as free floating. This is a Benchmade Griptilian right here. And it's got zero blade play blade centering on it's basically you know what I mean, running down the line there, if I can actually get a good angle on it. It's basically perfect, which leads to this amazing action right here. Running on phosphorus bronze washers. Again, zero blade play, and it's that free floating. So this knife still falls, I mean, it falls shut, but it just doesn't move nearly as fast as this knife here. Being all ball bearings, this thing flies around. And I actually handed this to somebody a little while ago, and they disengaged the lock on it and almost cut themselves. They got, you know, just the edge of their pinky right there, you know, was actually still in the mechanism. So it came down and got him just a little bit. You know, it wasn't too bad, but it did pinch him. You know, I mean, cut them a little bit. And so this you know, this knife really takes a bit of getting used to because it's just different. It, it functions different than a lot of than a lot of other knives because it is ball bearings moving so quickly with this axis lock. I really like it. It's fun to fidget with. This is one of the fun of fidget knives that I've had to play with. Other people have said that and they're, I mean, they're completely right. This knife is a whole lot of fun to fidget with. Back and forth and back and forth and you can deploy it with the axis lock and do all these crazy, you know, little twists and things and get it out. It is definitely a good knife for that. It's got a lot of, man, if I can quit hitting my tripod, it does have a lot of just general EDC use built into this blade shape. It's a relatively thin blade made out of 20 C CV, and you can see there's no markings on this side. It's almost sterile besides that 20 CV. I think this blade looks great without those axis lock patents running all over the blade. But the, actually, the overall design itself just really kind of screams gentleman's EDC. But the fact that it is so fast and it's quick into action with a 3.5 inch blade and as narrow and as kind of stabby as this little tip is here, it's, it is going to penetrate in material quite well. It kind of fits into a class to me which this thing is actually advertised as. This is the first knife I'm gonna compare this one to. This was advertised as a gentleman's tactical folder, right? Gentleman's tactical knife. This is a Benchmade in Pell. It's a California legal you know, sub two inch automatic. And that's actually what I think this knife, really where this thing kind of excels. It's in that gentleman's tactical category. The same area as like the 940, this Benchmade Griptilian right here. If you get the Dash 1 series, not as much the uh, standard, you know, 551 model here. The Grivery scales like I got, that's more of a workhorse than actually a gentleman's folder. But this is just... A nice knife. It does have a $425 price point, which is kind of, I mean, that is a lot of money, but again, you're, you're buying an entangled titanium bench made, you know, 
it's just going to cost a crap load of money. And with that, I, I, I didn't buy this knife. I actually got this knife through a little bit of horse trade and I did with some other knives. But I definitely think it is worth that price tag. I mean, I would, I would pay that if I didn't actually, because it wasn't actually able to trade for it. One of the things I first had to do off the, just right off the bat, you can see that pocket clip there still isn't quite touching the scale. But when it came out, when I actually got it, that thing was like, you know, way off the scale and it led to this listen you hear that tapping that's me actually just the pocket clip tapping in there whenever i get, grip this knife and it was so loud because that pocket clip was so far away that it was so loud when that when i first got this thing i had to do something about it that really just bothered me so I bent that pocket clip down a little bit. I didn't want to put it all the way against the scale. The reason I, it's still off just a, just a little bit, I adjusted it just a little bit down, is it's, 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 it is an interesting design pocket clip. It's not the best pocket clip in the world. It's not as bad as some people are trying to make it out to be. It does work really well. But one of the reasons I actually think that it was sitting further off isn't just being able to slide it in and out of your pocket easier. Because with it down like this, it still does go in and out of my pocket relatively easy. But when it does, listen to this, right? You hear that? That's it coming out of my pocket. Right, and what that is is that the the clip actually slamming into the titanium. Every time it comes up and over the lip of my pocket, it dings down into that titanium, which I absolutely love. I love pulling this thing in and out of my pocket because I get to hear that little. It's just freaking cool. I've actually I really like that, but I'm kind of strange in that way, right? And it's gonna beat the shit out of that titanium. That right there, that little impact over time, ding, ding. Ding, ding, me doing that, picking this thing in and out of my pocket is going to put a mark right across that titanium right there. It's going to beat a little shelf actually into that titanium scale. And so I wonder if that's one of the reasons that they actually decided to do that. Because it is going to be ruining the, the kind of overall aesthetic of this knife. If you decide to take that pocket clip off and switch it to the other side for some reason, you're going to have this big ding across the, the you know, your knife caused by the pocket clip. Which happens with majority of knives. Knives. You mean you can say the same thing? I don't know if it's gonna come across you, I mean that's it's worn right there under the, on that titanium finish, right underneath that pocket clip. Happens with most knives, but I think that's that's it's gonna be especially apparent with this chevron pattern here. They've got carved into this titanium. I really do like the construction of this. You can see I've got a couple scratches here, and almost none of these were here when I actually got it. It wasn't in absolutely perfect condition, but it, I mean it was still what. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to get out of the box like that. I put all these little scratches on here. Most of them came from my pen, keys, stuff like that, carrying it in my pocket. I do like this knife. I've been carrying it around the last few days, and it's it is probably going to wind up in my EDC lineup, but a lot of people have made the comparison to this blade shape to the Cursory Sabenza. And really, I think that's just like a... I think that's more of a subconscious play that people have seeing that these knives are kind of in the same price bracket. Because you look at the spine of this knife, this is a clip point. This is a drop point. I've heard some people actually call this here a clip point, and it's really not. Because that blade shape, it does have a definite angle change here, but it's a dropping point all the way down. That is not a straight angle. It's a dropping point. And it's much more reminiscent in the spine area to this. It's actually a Chris Reeves and Kosi right here. If I line the spine of these knives up, you can see just how similar the curvature of these actual blades are, as well as just the design and profile. This is obviously a hollow ground here, and it's much broader, but it's still just that you know sweeping drop point design, which is an interesting actual aspect of this blade shape here, because there's a lot of flat on this blade shape. Some people have said that they love it. I'm... I mean, I, I can't, I don't dislike it. I don't dislike this blade shape, but the amount of flat that you have here and then this little tiny bit of belly actually coming up to meet that tip, it's definitely a thin tip. I like how it's thin, it has good penetration ability. I mean, it is a nice pokey tip. That's that that's a good thing but the oh, it just doesn't quite have enough belly. There's too much flat and then not enough belly on this blade shape and so 
I'm yeah, it could be improved. I definitely I just like a little bit more belly on my blade, something like this where you have more working area up in that area cuz that's definitely enough flat. But if you prefer more of a flat section on your actual cutting edge, then I mean, you this is going to be excellent because look at that. The belly doesn't actually the curvature, you know, this blade doesn't actually doesn't start until this point here. So I mean, you've got a good two and a half inches of straight cutting edge with this knife design. And that's excellent. That's 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 a really good thing. I like that. One of the problems with this thing out of the box, though, if you can look at the actual blade stop right here, it, the what it's using as a blade stop is actually using the frame. You know what I mean? It's just this titanium frame, and it's only contacting on that one side. You can see that. You can definitely see it on the back tang of the blade here. The actual tang of the blade's just got that one little mark, and it's only on one side of the blade. That's where it's making contact on the inside of that frame right there. You can see just right on the end where it's actually beaten into that end anodizing and the reason for that is it's, it's interesting because if you look down on the inside of this knife there's a track you can see that track going down the center line of the that milling right there and that's just you know their cnc program whatever it is but if you notice this side is fractionally higher than this side there's actually a transition there and it's the same thing with the back of this knife so the stop what's working is the stop pin blade stop whatever it is is actually higher you can see the transition right there and so this side here where it's deformated is a little bit higher just a fraction higher fraction of a millimeter higher than this side over here and so it's leading it to only make contact and actually for the stop on one side which isn't necessarily the biggest problem in the world it is a fit and finish issue there it's a fitting issue but it's not a huge problem because the axis lock has some built-in relief you know that act, you know, that shelf right there that, that that bar is actually sliding up onto to give you that lock to actually engage the lock. It's sliding behind the blade right there. You can see that there is some relief. I've got a lot of space for that bar to move up on that lock and it'll still have a proper lock engagement. And so that little shelf of titanium, once that's deformated all the way down and it eventually levels out, you know what I mean? I'll have it'll have this is all theory. None of, I don't know this for sure, but it'll have, you know, I mean, it'll have a full support across that entire bit of titanium there. And it's, that's going to, you know, keep the not keep the length, the longevity of this lock up for a decent amount of time. I think that that's okay. But it is just a little bit of a fit and finish issue. It's interesting that their milling was off that far. That's, that's, that's a decent amount. You know I mean, that's a decent amount for a CNC machine. You can see it. Other than that, blade centering is perfect. But, I mean, it's dead on center. Action's excellent. The grind is not. You can see, you can see how how much breadth this side has here. A lot of people have been talking about that with this knife. And I mean, that's just bench made. It really, oh, it's a $425 knife. It's like their flagship folder. People are expecting them to put more quality control into this specific knife than any of the other knives coming off the lot, and that's really just asking too much. Unless it's a gold class knife or a limited edition, something like that, they're going to give these to the same people that they're giving every other knife because those are the people that work in the factory. And so expecting a different grind or any extra quality control for a $425 knife opposed to a $125 knife is just asking too much with modern production standards, you know, or the way that the production industry is going. It's not asking too much. That would actually be an amazing thing, and I do wish that they would do that, but I, I just don't ever see that happening from a company like Benchmade, even though I'm not trying to talk shit. I love the crap out of Benchmade. Another thing... 2017 i wanted to throw this one up there because some people have said that this is the most expensive blue class knife and it's not this is their most expensive blue class knife this has got an msrp of 500 this has got an msrp of 600 and it's interesting that this is also channel constructed because if this is you know comparing this knife to a valley song you'd say it's a channel constructed folding knife because it's really that's kind of what it is this is a channel constructed valley song each one of these handle scales here or each one of these handles i guess is a a solid piece of titanium that's just been milled out to actually meet you know to actually create a channel for that blade it's the same thing with this knife here it's just 
you know, a block of titanium channeled out. And it's interesting that they came out with them both in 2017. They're both running on ball bearings and they're both channel constructed blades. I think that's quite interesting. Yeah, 2017 was the year of the Benchmade Integral. But yeah, I'm going to carry this one around for a little bit. I'll probably do another video on it. I love that pocket clip. It looks so good sticking out of my pocket. I like it. Listen to that. This thing sounds freaking excellent. Y'all have a good one.